Hello class, George here, and in this next series of videos, we're going to take a look at a slightly more complicated example than what we've been working with so far. We've gotten a lot of great foundational information down with uh, layouts and resources and coding and buttons and so forth, but I wanted to take that to the next level, and we're going to be covering several different topics to actually create what you see here, which is a very simple memory game. So right now we have the option of only playing a 4x4 uh, grid. If I click on this, it's going to start a new activity. And this new activity has a bunch of uh, different drawable resources here. We have question marks. And if we click on one of them, it is going to change to one of these different images that I've created. You can make them anything you want to. I use numbers to just show that it's easy. And when you find the same match, which case I, I did the first time, I didn't mean to do that because this is all randomized technically, they will match for you. And I can't click on them again. That's locked out. If I click again and I find a different one, so there's eight. You'll notice there's a delay afterwards, and then it will reset back to where it was. And I can continue to try to search, and if they're not a match, they'll just keep going back to the way they were. One and one, three and three, eight, two and seven. So now that we've solved it, uh, I didn't take the time to put a you win text view or anything, but you certainly could do that if you want to. We can go back, we can do it again. Now that you've seen it in action, why don't we go ahead and talk about all the different concepts we're going to cover in the next several videos. Okay, so we're creating a, a memory game, right? And this is actually uh, a little bit more complicated than I expected to get into. Um, there's, there's quite a few different ways of doing something like this. And specifically, we're gonna cover how one activity can start another activity. So we're gonna create two different activities that are gonna exist within our app. And activity one is just gonna be the main menu. And then the main menu is gonna have an option to press a button. And that option will then, of course, start another activity, which will have a different layout. And that layout is going to feature a grid view, which is one we haven't seen yet. And the grid view, you can define to have a certain number of rows and columns. And then you can place objects there. Now you can place these objects uh, manually using XML uh, inside of Android Studio, which is what I first did when I created the concept for this game. But then I wanted to take it a little bit further and I decided to do this um, procedurally or at runtime. So the views that I'm gonna place in here are gonna be created at runtime. And I did something a little bit dirty. Normally in Android and in a lot of other programming settings, a lot of people like to follow um, the model view controller aspect of, of programming. And the idea behind that is our model here is our data. And that's your information that you're storing away. And a lot of times this could be a database, this could just be a repository, it could be a list, an array, a dictionary, it's just information, maybe stored in standard Java classes, okay? Maybe uh, a contact information or something. And then there's the view, and this is actually what you see on the screen. And the controller is in charge of managing clicks and events that are happening over at the view, uh, deciding what to do, it's the logic side and then it will update the model. And then if the model changes, it will also come back through and update the view. With how we're going to approach things, because I wanted to show something kind of interesting, and that is um, inheriting from a uh, widget, which is going to be button. So we're going to inherit from button and create our own memory button. And what I did that's kind of wrong, eh, but you know what, rules are meant to be broken or bent a little bit, is I store data inside that view. And really this should be separated out, but I kind of wanted to make it so that when a button gets pressed, I know information about it without having to look up a dictionary or other information. I wanted to know what row it was on, what column it's on, and this information is actually not easy for you to access. Even though you can specify in the XML which row and column it should be a part of, at runtime, uh, you can't get that information back. Um, you can come up with things where you know the row size and the column size, and you can use like adapters and so forth to figure things out. But if you're just doing standard on click type events that we've seen so far, you, you really lack the information you want. So what I wanted to do is on our on click listener, on our on click event, we get a view object. And that view object is gonna get typed, casted over into our memory button object. And that memory button object is gonna have some great parameters that make our lives a lot easier. And of course, those, excuse me, and that memory button object is gonna have some uh, variables stored inside that are gonna make our life really easier. It's gonna have the row, it's gonna have the column, it's gonna have what it should, uh, an ID for what it should be drawing, that is the picture on the one side, and it should have also uh, a drawable to show us a picture on the front side. And it'll also have a picture for the front and a picture for the back, so that when we flip it, 
If we wanted to, we could have every button have a different front and back, but right now the front's unique and the back is the same for all of them. That's the question mark, and this is you know one of the numbers, whatever that might happen to be. So that's one part of it. So we have a start activity, we have this memory button class, and what we also have though, and I can't believe I've forgotten to mention this, is the actual game activity, the memory game activity. So our game activity, which is what is launched by our uh, menu activity, is going to do several things for us. It's going to set up our layouts. Uh, that means, you know, inflation. It's going to inflate things. It's going to create our custom views, and it's going to attach them to the, um, to the grid layout. That's already going to be set up for us. It's going to set up uh, where these views should be on their row and their column. We're going to do that all through programming and not using the XML. It's also, this, this game activity class is going to handle, it's going to implement that on click. So this class is actually going to handle it. We're not going to do an anonymous class this time. Not this time. And we're also going to talk about handlers very quickly uh, as a way of delaying execution on the main UI thread so that we can do something like if the user presses one button and then they press the next button, we instantly know when they press the button and we react to that and we'll make things flip or turn around and so forth. But what we want to do is show the user that they've made a mistake. They want to see that they, you know, this image is six and this image is seven, therefore they don't match. And you need a bit of a delay. And we're gonna delay things by, I don't know, maybe like a few seconds so that they see, oh, I saw that this was a six, I saw this was a seven, I did the wrong thing, these will flip back around, and then you'll have a chance to put a new answer in after that. All right, so that's pretty much a complete explanation of what we're going to be doing in the next few videos. I'll explain a lot more as we go through this, but uh, hopefully it doesn't look too daunting. It's really an extension of what we've learned already, um, just taken a little bit further. So in the next video, we'll jump right into coding. Thanks everyone, see you next time, bye.